sat on my bed, rubbed my face, just to be sure that I wasn't dreaming. And there he was standing there. He says, if you shout and somebody comes, I'll kill them and kill you. So I'm sitting on my bed. He says, give me your money. You know, those devil, eh, I keep saying that the devil is smart. We were renovating my mother's house. So my siblings had brought money, and the money was with me. So quickly, I took the $2,200 and gave him. And I had 50 euro of my own, I gave him. Then I took my purse, gave the CDs to him. And he says, he counts the money and says, this small money is not enough. People's money that I've given you, you say it's not enough. So I said, that's all the money I have. Then he says, gold jewelry. And I said, I don't do gold jewelry if you know me. I don't do gold jewelry. Then I remember that I had a gold watch. I gave it to him. I give a gold earring and a gold necklace. Then he got upset. Turned my room upside down. Of course, didn't find money. Didn't find any jewelry. And then he started. You wasted my time, so I'll kill you. And that I want to call my boss. Whether he called his boss or not, I don't know. But this time, he had dragged me from the bed and put me on the ground, hitting my head on the floor. He spoke on the phone for a couple of minutes and said, my boss says I should shoot you, but I won't shoot you. I'll strangle you so that you die a slow death, and next time you come, you have money. So I said, sincerely, I don't have money. You've set my room. So he started strangling me. First, the gun was put in my ear. He takes it out, strangling me. And I was praying. Then he says, don't waste your time to pray because you are dying. Don't. And I said, I'm praying. And I'm also praying for you. He strangled me to, you know how you can go in and out of consciousness. And you, you, you know when you are doing it, I could go. And I was very thirsty. So I said, I'm thirsty. He actually started strangling me, went and took water from the fridge in my bedroom, opened it, put it in my mouth. Just when I started drinking, he snapped it, closed it, and then started strangling me. All this while I was praying, I said, Lord, are you looking for this man to kill me? Lord, please, are you looking for this man to kill me? Lord, save this man, help this man, have mercy on him, have mercy on him. You know, I, I don't know how I can describe it to you. When you are sick, Let's say you have a headache. You can go and buy a paracetamol or go to the hospital. When you've been diagnosed with an illness, you can go to the hospital, you'll be healed. But when you are in the valley of the shadow of death and an armed robber is holding a gun to your head and is strangling you and you are choking, there's nothing you can do. But me, I realize that there's one thing I could do. Call on my God. Not just to help me, but to help him. Because I laid down and I said to myself, how can a woman be pregnant for nine months? Give birth to such an evil person. So Lord, have mercy on him. How possible can it be that you give birth to somebody who turns like this? So I was praying for him. Me, I was thinking about my children. I said to myself, oh God, my children, what will they do? Lord, have mercy on all. I kept praying. Then he would silence me. Stop praying. Stop praying. We went through that till I started foaming on the, in the mouth. And I was fainting. I don't know how many of you can tell when you are fainting. When you are fainting, sometimes you can tell that you are going. All I heard was, now you are dying. The next thing I see, I'm walking in some streets, beautiful buildings. I haven't seen, in all my travels, and I've traveled quite a distance, I haven't seen any buildings like that. The streets are super. And everybody I saw was in a hurry. And when I got close to somebody, they would turn. They won't look at me. From shop to office to on the street, nobody looked at me. So I walked the streets singing till I got to a garden. Beautiful. Those who know me know that I love plants. I have a garden. This garden is a million times beautiful than my garden. Beautiful than Kew Gardens. Those of you who know Kew Gardens. Beautiful than all the gardens you can tell. So I went to sit in. 
I don't know where a basket came from. I started picking the flowers and putting them in the basket. Just when the basket was half full, I felt a hand on my right wrist, and I said, who are you? I couldn't see anybody. All I could see was the hand. And I heard, it is time to go. And I said, me, I'm not going anywhere. I like this place. I'm staying here. The hand grabbed me more and said, let's go now. And all I felt was me walking with this hand dragging me. And then I realized I was lying in my room. Then I began to think I was being strangled by an armed robber. Now I didn't see the armed robber. Because my alarm didn't go or my security didn't say anything, I thought the armed robber had killed my security, killed all the people in the house. So now where is he? What do I do? My head was aching. I put my hand on my head and there was a bulge. Hey! My neck was so sore, I couldn't walk. So I crawled, took my phone, called the police emergency number. There was no reply. Then a thought just came to me. Call your, I called my security. He picked the phone. I said, I'm robber, I'm robber, I'm robber. That's all I could say. Within seconds, I heard gunshots. Now I'm lying in my room, confused. Apart from the pain, I don't even know what to do. And then when the gunshot ceased, I managed to drag myself, thinking that, let me go and see what has happened to the people in my house. Then my cousin starts coming, and I'm like this, go, because by this time, I don't know where the armed robber is. And he's screaming, and I'm saying in my head, the man says, if somebody's crazy, he'll kill them and kill me. Hey, this cousin wants us to be killed. And he's wailing. Apparently, my face was like, my face was one big mess. So he's seeing my face and screaming. Long story short, I called my uh, son, who called my doctors. Somebody I called, who I thought a policeman close by, called the Tessano police. So the patrol came, all policemen and so on came. My doctor came and said, you have to go to the hospital for a scan. He calls a few hospitals. The response is, well, we won't open the scan's place until 8 a.m. That's around 4 something. So he says, there's somebody who is dying. It, we work at 8 a.m. He managed to get one place, one private place opened. So we go. And they are all looking at all those who I haven't seen my face. They are all looking at me. And I'm wondering, why are they looking at me like that? But long story short, we come out. For three days, I couldn't walk. I couldn't talk. He had damaged my throat. Now, my faith has never been in question. But my house and my wives were many, as they were when my husband died. So I said, God, how can an armed robber come to me? I give him what he wants, and he still wants to kill me. It doesn't make sense. How? So, of course, the psychological aspect to deal with it, the anxiety, and all the worries and the pain that psychologically comes. So I had to see a psychiatrist. But thank God, and to the glory of God, the armed robber was caught. And we are in court. In fact, yesterday we went to court. And the case is adjourned till the 20th June. I know that the Lord who delivered me will bring justice. No matter how long it takes, he will bring justice. And for those of you who saw me soon after, Kuli National President, do I look anything like what I've gone through, what I'm telling you? That is what God can do for his children. I said God has prepared me, has been preparing me. I don't have any answers to how he delivered me and why I wasn't frightened, why I didn't scream. Can you imagine if I screamed or something? But you see, God had taken me through all kinds of things and prepared me to stand for such a time as this. 
So our preparation is a process. It's ongoing. And our theme for this year is prepared vessels. Revival, prepared vessels for a special time. Your special time can be any time. But if you are prepared for that special time, and the special time comes, the Holy Spirit just tweaks something in you, and you are able to stand at that time. And so preparedness is very important, and it's key in the life of a Christian. Because like soldiers, you don't wait for the battle to come to you before you prepare. You prepare to go to battle. And for us Christians, it's a daily preparation. It's a daily preparation. It's a daily preparation. I don't look like the, any of the things that I've described to you. Do I? When people see me, they say, you are looking beautiful. You are looking younger. And I say to myself, you don't know. You don't know what this body has gone through. For your head to be hit on a floor. For your neck to be squeezed. You know, the place where he lay me and strangled me, if I was in old times, I would have called it a name and made a shrine and put there. You know how in the Bible, David and Co., I haven't called him, I haven't made a shrine, but on and off, I go and lie there and I thank God and I praise him because that is where the Lord delivered me. That is where he came through for me. People ask me, aren't you afraid you've gone back to your house? You know, where should I go? If anywhere I go, the memory is there, the thought is there. And because the Lord has confirmed his word to me, that he is with me to the end of time, I've gone back. I've gone back. And I've put my hand in his hand. And I'm walking daily in his grace. And truly, when I say I'm blessed, I'm blessed. How many of you have been pinned down by an armed robber, strangled? Ladies and gentlemen, the armed robber killed me. I died. I died. The armed robber killed me. I died. And I went to heaven. And I say it boldly. And if there is heaven, then there is hell. So those of you here who think that it is fiction, there's no heaven, there's no hell, there is. And you see the beauty about God. When God says that I know you before you were formed, it is not a joke. He does. How does God put me in a garden? While he's waiting to bring me back, he put me in a garden. Because God knows how I love gardens and plants. And those of you here who don't know me, he put me there to rest. While he brings me back. I don't know what you are going through, but I tell you, God knows each one of us by name. And he actually makes a declaration over each of us every day. In the darkest moments of my life, with the armed robber holding a gun to my head, with the armed robber strangling me, I cried to God and he delivered me. When God heals people, he has work for them to do. So all the times he healed me, the few ones I've told you, he had work for me to do. And he was preparing me. Tragedy has so much to give. Sometimes we think that tragedy is the end. I've just told you how God pulled me through my husband's death. And now how he's pulled me through those armed robberies. So I know that this tragedy has a lot. Just as my pain when my husband died was turned into purpose, I know this tragedy is being turned into purpose. And I can feel it and I know it. No valley is deeper than God's love. When I was in the shadow of the valley of death, it was bottomless. It was dark. But God's love came through. So no matter how deep the valley is, no matter what it is, all those things cannot compete with God's love. I 
I would like to tell you to invest your life in Jesus Christ. Because I know that it will yield good dividends. A friend of mine, a friend of my husband and I, he'd been saying that I'm always rushing, going to some prayer meeting or going to talk somewhere, and he's always saying, stop, you are tiring too much. When this armed robbery case came, he came to my house and said, for those of you who speak, uh, Auntie Tilly, who find it, yeah, Agbene, catch up where, yeah, call now, drive a crab, me and Chenga Bobaya, a jack, she, oh, Solomon, he lay boy, me and lay, no, no, my came Jibo. To translate, Auntie Tilly, next time you are called, go. I won't complain again that you are going too much. Even if you don't have a driver, I'll go with you. Because I've sat down and realized that it's your prayers that help to deliver you. And that me, if it were me, I don't know what would have happened. I don't know what. In fact, the first policeman who came to my house, who I don't know, just said, Madam, you won't die. Madam, you will live. To declare that I don't know him. But you know, that is what God does. So invest your lives in Jesus. And you will yield good test dividends. I am a testimony of that. I am a testimony of that. And I know that when we keep our spiritual edge fully depending on God, we will experience his power. We will experience his power. You know, I didn't tell you, but a couple of days before this incident, I'd been in March prayer because the ladies were going to have an annual Thanksgiving. So I'd been in March prayer, I'd been in March prayer. In fact, the day before, the Lord told me something was going to happen to me. So I knew something was going to happen. But I didn't know what, what it was. But I'd been in much prayer. So please, don't joke with praying. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly at all. I'm a testimony of God's goodness. And I always say that I don't know why God loves me so much and why he's so good to me. In fact, I would love to serve God better than I'm doing. So I keep asking God, even this basa basa I'm doing, look at how you come through for me. Hey, then I must be serious. So, so you see, all those things have energized me, have boldened me. And ladies and gentlemen, I have come too far to go back. I have come too far that I will not miss heaven. You know, after all those things, hey, why should I tell I miss heaven? God forbid, even if it is with one leg, I will go to heaven. Even if it's with one eye, I will go. So ladies and gentlemen, it is up to each of us to decide whether we've been dealt blows that we can't and therefore we'll sit down and groan or we'll move on. The choice is ours. But I can assure you that God, because he knows each of us, has a plan for each of us, and he will help us. This is my testimony. And I pray to God that somebody here will find something in my testimony that will help them. Now, with all that I have said, God can do even better for each of you.